I'd love to introduce Melanie and Elise from Zinkle. Now, how I'll just give you a quick little overview how today is going to run. Um, Melanie and Elise are going to run through a quick presentation, which will go for approximately 10, 15 minutes, telling us all about Zinkle, their journey to date, what they've been up to and where they see the business going and a little bit about the raise that they're undertaking at the moment on virtual. We'll then switch to a Q&A session. So while that presentation is going on, there's a little Q&A box down the bottom. Pop your questions in there and we'll get to those during the Q&A uh, time at the end. You can keep adding them as we keep going. No stress at all. Now, we are also recording today's sessions. So if you have to jump off or anyone didn't make it, we will absolutely be sending this link around at the end. So don't fret. I know we're all very busy. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Mel and Elise. Hi, as Anna said, I'm Elise. Uh, and I'm Melanie, and we're the founders of Zinkle, your dating GPS. So we help singles discover the best places to go out to and socialise, where they can truly connect with new people in the real world at real venues. And it's time to improve the way we connect. At Zinkle, our vision is to create an ecosystem for connectivity that supports singles and businesses. We want to revolutionize the dating industry and bring back the human element of connection. Although we live in a world that's so digitally connected, more and more people are feeling disconnected from those around them. And we want to be the leading dating platform that connects people in real life to help them form and grow organic and meaningful connections. So the journey of Zinkle. So Zinkle was created from personal experience. When I come out of a long-term relationship, I was thrown back into the world of dating and I really had no choice but to download dating apps because that's just what everyone does. Uh, although they were a novelty at the start, uh, it didn't take too long until I felt like a digital commodity on those swipe-based dating apps. And I just found it really difficult to make a meaningful connection. All I wanted was to meet someone in real life, but I didn't know where to go out to do so. So enter release. As someone who's been married for 10 years, I help Mel critique her dating app matches and helped her, you know, form messages and things. Um, but what we noticed very quickly was the novelty of dating apps uh, soon wore off. And I watched as Mel's disappointment grew with each failed dating app match. So I knew I had to step in. So as her best friend and wing, wing woman, I made it my mission to help her take the dating scene by storm. We just didn't know where to go. We've both been in relationships for so long that we were completely out of touch with the hotspots for our age groups. So we would spend our weekends poring over reviews and scanning Instagram for the perfect spots. However, the problem was is when we got there on the night, the crowd was either too young or too old or the venue was just completely empty and there was no vibe. So we check Instagram stories to see where all the people were out and about in real time. And then we'd get taxis across town to those venues in the hope of being at the right place at the right time. And so many singles also experience this frustration and don't know where to go out to meet people. As we were out, we also couldn't help but notice how many empty venues we came across. And this is due to our background in business marketing. We just couldn't understand how these places had so much potential, yet they struggled to attract people. Um, so we couldn't help shake that feeling that there had to be a better way, a solution to um, our problem and to business's problem. So finally, after months and months and months with living with this problem, it hit us. The solution was an app that could help people like us, people searching for a connection to find the perfect spot to meet new people. An app that could match you with the right venues and crowds based on your preferences and interests. And so the idea of Fazinkle was born. We created an app that helps you decide where to go with your friends based on the people you want to meet and be around and tells you which venues have the best vibes. It also provides a way to connect with other singles in real life and social venues to form organic connection while helping drive engagement with venues and businesses. So singles today can't help but feel trapped because they really have no other choice but to be on swipe-based dating apps. They're bombarded with endless digital profiles on these apps, but they still feel alone. They want to meet people in real life organically, but they have inadequate tools and information to make choices about where to go out and who they meet. 84% of millennials say they'd rather meet someone in real life, but don't know where to go out to do so. And ultimately, current swipe-based dating apps aren't meeting the fundamental needs singles are calling out for 
And as a result, singles are being held hostage by these apps. As consumers, we all know the importance of supporting local businesses. They add character and diversity to our communities, and they're often the backbone of our economy. However, small businesses often struggle to attract new customers and keep them coming back. Um, without a steady, steady stream of customers, these businesses can't survive, let alone thrive. In fact, 94% of small businesses say that repeat customers are essential to their success. And when these businesses succeed, the benefits ripple throughout the community. Enter Zinkle. So we are updating the dating experience and Zinkle is designed so that you can match and meet in real life in social venues. We've developed a unique feature that sets us apart from other dating apps, our real-time venue search feature. With this, you can easily plan a night out with your friends and know which venues are most popular with compatible singles. With the help of venue search, you can take the guesswork out of planning a night out because you can see in real time how many compatible singles are at various venues so you can make an informed decision about where to go. By providing users with the tools they need to make these informed choices, we're helping to create more purpose-built, efficient, effective and enjoyable dating experiences. In addition, we can almost instantaneously drive a crowd into a venue, generating more revenue for a business while helping them to understand more about their customers. And as female founders, safety is at the core of everything we do. We partner with Google and use their API hospitality data so that we're only displaying people when they're in registered hospitality venues in real time. And we've also built in three modes of visibility, meaning once you get to a venue, you can put yourself on visible, and see other singles who are visible so you know who's open to being approached. Or you can put yourself in incognito and go about your night as you normally would. Uh, when you do see someone that you're interested in, you can break the ice via Zinkle and then meet straight away and assess that chemistry and that connection quickly. Uh, this means basically that people can use Zinkle in the way that they feel most comfortable. Zinkle creates an entirely new category in the market by seamlessly combining both B2C and B2B revenue streams. We're a brand for singles who are looking for organic connections and who want to meet in real life. And we're a brand for businesses who want to attract and engage new customers. This unique ecosystem opens up a vast and untapped market for us to explore. We do understand that everyone has different needs, which is why we've created a freemium based business model, allowing users to use the single app in a way that works best for them. Our app offers free features for users to enjoy, as well as paid and earned premium features to enhance their experiences. Additionally, we also collaborate with businesses to foster communities and encourage real life engagement with their venues through ticketed events. Currently, our revenue is generated through both the premium app subscriptions and ticketed events. To acquire and retain users, we've developed a comprehensive through the line acquisition strategy. We focus on a mix of paid, owned and earned activities that allow us to target our key audiences. And these include channels like performance media, PR, events, and social media. Between Elise and I, we have over 27 years of combined marketing experience. And we know that a multi-channel approach, including online and offline activities, gives us the strongest position in market. So we can create buzz, build brand awareness, and ultimately drive app downloads. Our retention strategy uses data and behavioral analytics to nurture and engage users and convert them into paying subscribers. And these combined efforts help us increase the lifetime value of our users so we can generate reoccurring revenue and accelerate our user base growth. And since launching Zinkle um, and implementing these strategies, we've been able to achieve thousands of singles joining Zinkle hundreds of people attending our events and significant increases in user engagement. And these results really demonstrate the market demand and the need for Zinkle and highlight our growing commercial traction. Our focus on commercialization also extends to our monetization strategy, which includes a subscription-based model for access to premium features and the B2B model for partnerships with venues and businesses, led by a sales team. By leveraging our unique venue search feature and real-time data on compatible singles, we can provide valuable insights and opportunities for these partners to increase their foot traffic and customer engagement. We also plan to explore additional revenue streams through targeted advertising and sponsored events. 
Our approach to commercialization is multifaceted and focused on driving growth and the profitability of the company. In 2021, we successfully raised over $450,000 in our first virtual raise, allowing us to bring our vision for Zinkle to life and launch it across Australia. So since launching in March, we've seen an average of 27% user growth month on month, generating revenue from app subscriptions and events and providing a significant boost to the businesses we've partnered with. So we've generated over 30,000 in additional revenue for them. Um, these achievements showcase the potential and the impact of our innovative solution. So in addition to our marketing experience, Elise and I spent most of our time in technology and digital innovation teams. So we've built apps and app features and taken them to market. And we recently hired Daniel, our Zinkle product manager, who specializes in app design, technical product development, and tokenomics. So not only have we lived the problem firsthand, we've also conducted extensive primary research um, and we have a deep understanding of the dating as well as the retail and hospitality industries. And this combined experience and knowledge gives us confidence in our team's ability to scale and further commercialize Zinkle. And supporting us, we have a strong team of consultants, advisors, and investors who have a wealth of experience in leadership, strategy, legal, technology, and startups. Um, they've worked with some of the world's biggest brands, including Meta, EY, IBM, and Virgin Mobile. Um, and they've been able to help provide guidance and support in helping us achieve our milestones so far and continue to work with us on our business plans, financial projections, as well as our growth strategies. The funds we raise will make our current singles offering even better and add new features to drive more revenue streams. They'll also help us expand our capabilities to support even more businesses. We'll use these funds to supercharge our acquisition strategies and bring even more growth to the company. Thank you. And yeah, we're excited to have everyone here today and um, having you join us on our Zinkle journey. Thank you so much. That was super interesting. I know I, when I heard about Zinkle, was super impressed and super excited to hear of such a new and fresh approach to dating as a victim of the swipe-based dating uh, apps myself in a past life. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, now throwing it open to questions. If you have any questions, please pop them in the box. Um, I guess to kick it off, I'll, I'll start with a burning question. Obviously, community is such a, um, a key part of what you're fostering um, within Zinkle and with your product. How have you been really engaging them so far and what's the plan with the future as you build this community and keeping them engaged and bringing them on the Zinkle journey? So we host a number of events, so in real life events, and that's a really important feedback loop um, and point in time where we engage with our community, get their feedback, how they're experiencing things, you know, what's working well, what's not. Um, when we developed the app, we also built in a feedback loop um, in that as well. So people are able to connect with us, submit suggestions and give us feedback. Um, and it's a really important part that we, you know, co-create the experiences with our community to make sure that we're addressing their problems and being able to help them as much as we can. Amazing. And do you, I know uh, the Google hospitality is a key part of, of the, um, the venue aspect. Could you maybe just talk us a little bit about that, how that works? I'm sure some people might have some, if they've not used the dating app before or if they've not logged in, just a little bit more detail about maybe how that works. Yes. So we obviously have partnered with Google. Um, so you're only shown in registered hospitality venues, so bars, clubs, uh, restaurants, pubs, um, which means if you're at home and you're trying to plan your night out, you're not shown um, in any way. You just, um, you, you can only see in numbers um, at those venues. So let's all pretend we're single. It's a Saturday night. We want to go out. Uh, your friend calls you. They say, Where do you, let's go out. And you go, oh, where, where are we going? You put in the suburb that you want to go to. So you put in Surrey Hills, for example, and then up and you put your preferences. So what age range you're looking for, male, female, non-binary, et cetera. Um, and then up will pop up the venues that have um, the people that match those preferences in them. So you can see there's 10 at the clock, there's 23 at the Dolphin and there's five at the White Horse. And you say to your friend, all right, we're going to go to the Dolphin. Let's go. You're not seen. No one can see you. Um, you can only see 23 people. Once you get there, 
um, we then have the three modes of visibility that Mel spoke to. So if you turn yourself on um, incognito, you just have a traditional night out. Um, whereas if you turn yourself on visible, you can see the people that are also on visible, um, which is also a good icebreaker because you immediately know who in that venue is open to being approached. Um, you know, so you see Christian, Steve, Bob, um, you go on to the, you, you swipe through, you say, oh, look, Christian looks good. Um, you send a, I'm interested. He hopefully sends ones back. Um, and then you can um, obviously meet and have a chat at the bar. Um, you can turn that on and off at any point. If it's off, you're not shown. If you're on anonymous, you're obviously just shown as a number. Um, you can't turn it on when you're at the shops, for example. You can't turn it on, um, you know, if you're at the park. It's just those registered venues and that's purposely built for safety reasons. And obviously um, they are the venues where it is most conducive to, to meet somebody. And it really acts as a decisioning tool because that was a problem Elise and I had as Elise touched on, like we'd spend our time kind of researching like, you know, where do singles go in Sydney and what are the hottest bars, but they could never tell us when was the right time to go there because the times we were going there were definitely not the right times. Um, and so for us, it, it's really important that it acts as that decisioning tool to, you know, to get you in the right place at the right time and effectively engineer that serendipity. Yeah, amazing. We've had a quick little question from Jason who says, amazing. Thank you, Jason. What proportion of revenue is through ticketed events versus premium features? And has also touched on a question which Elise has just sort of answered, which is, can you explain a little bit more about the visibility, um, invisible incognito, et cetera, which we've touched on. And I think we've also touched on the next section, which is how does your app introduce slash break the ice? Um, so if there's anything else you wanted to cover there, but I think the first question was what proportion of revenues through ticketed versus premium features? Um, at, well, at the moment, when we do run events, uh, we've got 60% of revenue is through um, subscriptions, 40% is on um, events, but that's when we run one event per month. So if we were to up the events, obviously, um, that would that would flip over. So, but as a general rule, it's a 60-40. Great. Is that strategy going to continue as of the business, do you think, that sort of proportion of events versus subscriptions? Um we do aim to obviously grow subscriptions. Um, as they grow, that will outweigh the events that we do. As we partner with venues, because that is a big, um, obviously the, the B2B strategy for us, um, we will be hosting more and more events, um, but we do aim for it to, to, to for subscriptions to outweigh um, the events. What we do with the events is um, it is a way for businesses to generate an instant crowd. And that is the most important thing that we are actually driving people to physical venues. We're rewarding our users for being at those physical venues. And obviously the businesses are rewarded through additional revenue for those people being there. Amazing. Slightly technical question, burning question from me. How do venues become uh, visible on your on your dating app? Is it that any register that hasn't Google API hospitality uh, data is able to be visible or do they sort of go through a vetting process? At the moment, that's correct for any venue. Um, we are introducing some new features that will um, go through a vetting request so that, you know, McDonald's or Pizza Hut is not showing um, because they are technically restaurants according to Google. Um, so we'll cut those out. And um, we also have... Um, a feature that will have uh, trending venues. So we can work with businesses um, and see what venues are actually trending and um, we can have some uh, sponsored venues that sit higher on that list as well if they want to drive an instant crowd. And obviously I imagine you'd be getting some revenue structure through that as well. Exactly, yes, yes. Love it. Um, we've got another question. So sort of on the same theme, you've mentioned valuable insights to venue. How do you sell or educate businesses on this? We um, will have a sales team that will um, help with uh, lead generation, nurturing those leads, and then obviously um, closing the deals. What we've been doing at the moment is proof of market testing. So um, Mel can run through more of that, but we have been hosting events with um, business partners, um, proving the concept that we can drive a venue, drive people into a venue on a Wednesday, Thursday night, typically not busy nights for them, um, and that we can generate additional revenue for you. So the proof is there for people. Um, and we've had 
we now have businesses calling us from, you know, Melbourne, Queensland, um, saying, hey, we want to do an event with you. How can we get this started? Great. Thank you. We've had another question from Josie who said, so glad to hear you're making an app like this. They've had the same idea themselves, limited in capacity to make it reality. So congratulations on getting it this far. Are there many opportunities to be involved in this project in other ways other than just monetary investment? I'll expand on that. So perhaps if someone hears this and they know a great um venue who could partner with you is there a forum or is there an online sort of contact that people can reach out to you obviously we've got the virtual profile there's a discussion board um, and if you express interest you can get contact details for the team to get in touch Josie so I'll half answer this for you but is there anything that you'd like to add to that ladies yes, 100% yeah, definitely the businesses and the venues, as Elise touched on, we do have people proactively reaching out to us, but we do want to expand that network as much as possible. Um, and to go along with that, things like drink sponsors um, as well is what we're also on the lookout for. Um, and then also um, media outlets and support in that, um, that element as well. So we have a PR team that helps us generate um, a lot of awareness and insights um, but we're always also looking for yeah any kind of media introductions who can help us amplify the brand as well. And obviously a, a lot of our existing shareholders um, do help out with these kind of things. They've all got our emails, our contact details, so they can reach out anytime and, you know, um, they, they are very, very helpful and they do help in more ways than just um, monetary ways. Amazing. So Josie, I um, will just give you a little bit of information and I will touch on equity crowdfunding and virtual because I imagine some people on the on the webinar today have never heard of equity crowdfunding and how it all works. So virtual um, is a crowdsource funding platform and within that Zinco has their profile. If you express your interest to invest, you'll be able to get in much easier contact with the team from Zinco. So that would probably be a great way for you to reach out and maybe have a have an offline discussion about this. Sounds sounds like fun. Um, so we're in the expression of interest phase at the moment, which has been running, we're in the third week. So this is the last week to express your interest. Next week on Tuesday, we'll, the offer period will commence, which will be private for two days. So that's private to the expression of interest list. So get in now. Quite often, um, companies will reach their maximum target. Uh, within that private offer period and you'll get other um, other benefits which are explained on the profile for expressing your interest now and getting in early joining that wait list so that's absolutely um, one way you can get more information on Zinkle and the team are more than happy to answer any questions that you might think of after after this because I know sometimes you might go and marinate on some information and come up with a burning question so the team are absolutely here to answer any of those um, so the offer will be open for two days and then the, the private offer, sorry, and then the entire um, offer will go for about two weeks. So private period for two days, only open to the expression of interest list, and then it will be open to the public if the maximum isn't reached before then. So get in now so that you don't miss out. Um, just as well with that offer, we'll be presenting um, within that an offer document, which will have all of the terms of the offer, the valuation that the team have come up with. So we're in the expression of interest phase at the moment, as I mentioned, all of the terms of the deal are still being finalized. So a minimum, a maximum and a valuation, um, but any up further information or questions you might have on that, you can either pop them in the box now or um, shoot an email or a note to the team um, via their profile as well to get in touch. Uh, did we have any last minute questions? Um, we've gone through them so far. I'll give everyone a couple of seconds, a um, little bit of extra time. Team, is there anything else you wanted to touch on that we haven't covered today? Uh, no, I think that, that covers everything. It was more just if there were specific questions that, that anyone had. Um, but yeah, really just wanted to give everyone an overview and um, highlight some of the um, yeah exciting traction that we've had so far. Absolutely. And in case anyone wasn't aware as well, this is, um, I know we touched on the journey so far, but this is Inkle's second raise with virtual. So we are super excited to have you back on the platform and support incredible businesses like yourself doing really game changing things. So um, if there's no more questions, we might close with that. 
Um, thank you, Jason. Jason's just lodged his EOI. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Jason. Um, but yes, the recording will be going out after this. If anyone wasn't able to jump on, anyone that you knew, um, we'll send that around. And as we said, any further info, just shout. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you so much. And thank you to Mel and Elise. We really appreciate your time today running us through your presentation. Thanks, everybody. And thank thanks, you. Anna, as well. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll talk soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.